Amongst the students were born before 1st of January 1998. Can I have so a large number? All of you are eligible voters. How many of you are enrolled as voters? Okay. You will find in urban India, the educated youth still do not go and vote. A large number, things are changing, but we still have large number who do not go and vote. Why? The first answer comes, my vote would hardly make a difference. There is no good candidate. Whom do I vote for? Democracy itself is a farce. What are you talking about asking me to go and vote? And finally, will it make a difference to our inefficient governments? Today, I will not talk about the first three points. I am sure you have been given enough arguments against these. And if not, you can always google those up. I would like to talk a little about inefficient governments, the fourth point. Have you ever come across examples, experiences which give you any hope about government? Anything the government has does which give you hope for future of India? Are there any examples which can show you the power of democracy? Can I make a difference? Can we contribute to anything towards nation building. So before I share some of my experiences, let me tell you something about myself a little bit, which you may not find on Google. I had been a science student, always in love with physics. So you can say a rationalist bent of mind. I always believed that everybody in government is either corrupt, lazy, or inefficient. And you can see where I have ended up. I had hardly visited a village in the first 25 years of my urban upbringing, and ended up my first 10 years in the career primarily working in rural India. Now, just to have some positive examples which I had the good of opportunity to come across. My second assignment, 800 of my sanitary workers decided to go on a blood donation protest, mass blood donation protest, to support my action as city commissioner of Tirnal Valley against the property tax defaulters. When I was able to finally convince them that this much of blood will go waste, we didn't have any facilities to store this much of blood. They finally decided to do the Japanese way, worked an hour extra every day for next one month with a black ribbon tied on their hands. Our tax collection doubled. I woke up a day with a nightmare that there are no children's park where the kids can go and play in the city. Over the next six months, we were able to construct 64 small children's parks in Tirnal Valley, and 25% of this contribution came from the citizens. We were able to convert a stinking garbage yard, the eyesore of the neighbors, a centralized dumping yard, into a dense forest by planting 10,000 trees on the periphery. These examples can go on and on. As head of uh, Sports Development Authority in Tamil Nadu, we were able to increase the number of students, number of kids who were being coached in summer coaching camps from 5,000 to 1 lakh without a single additional penny from the government. As I said, there are numerous examples which I can quote, but let me just share with you one incident which was kind of a life life changing a thought changing incident for me i was posted in 2001 as district collector of nagapatnam 
How many of you have heard of Nagapatnam? So I can think of some sizable contribution population from Tamil Nadu here. Nagapatnam, as you can see on the map, is one of the most backward districts in, Tamil Nadu, in India. Population of roughly 15 lakh, 85 percent farmers, 13 percent fishermen. Tail end of Kaveri River, you keep hearing about all kinds of disputes between Tamil Nadu and Karnataka on Kaveri. So tail end of Kaveri River, as a result, only if there is any water left, it reaches there. 2002 was the year of fourth successive droughts in Nagapatnam. You can see the condition of the barren fields, how the fields had actually cracked up. Now, what do the farmers do? They end up conducting havans, pouring hundreds of litres of ghee, trying to invoke rain gods. Now here, let me just share with you, in India, governance is not just about rolling out good policies or programs for the benefit of the citizens. Governance is also about emotionally sharing their sufferings and happiness. And as a result, I ended up participating in scores of such havens. Because the farmers wanted these, they believed in these, and you cannot go and tell them that, no, I'm a physics student, I can tell you it's not going to rain. So this is what was going on. One day, finally, frustrated, I said, no, we need to do something different. We mobilized like-minded citizens, like-minded farmer leaders, and decided that let's do a mega tree plantation. Something more scientific, which might bring rains, not to Nagapatnam, but maybe to Amazon forest, we don't know. But let's do something which is at least a little more scientific. By 25th November, by the time we were able to identify a contiguous piece of land where we could target to break the previous existing world record, so a 50 hectare of land we could identify, the monsoons were all long over in Tamil Nadu. We had to surpass the previous record of 42,000 saplings planted by a team of 300 persons in 24 hours. So we decided, let's make arrangements, let's target this number. We moved 50,000 saplings on the site and started the exercise. Were we well prepared? We had seven days of planning, complete seven days from the day we were able to actually identify this land. 16 hours into the attempt, we realized we haven't been able to plan properly. We realized we had set a wrong target. We were running short of saplings. Next six, seven hours, whatever numbers we could mobilize, we got another 32,000 saplings on the site and finished the attempt with a new Guinness record almost doubling the previous record, we had planted 80,000 to 44 saplings in 23 hours. We had no saplings left after 23 hours, and so we ended up doing this. This is what you can see, the thousands of villagers and farmers from all over the district who had gathered there, celebrating. Does it call for celebrations? Have we achieved what we had targeted? Yes, we have surpassed the previous record by almost double. But what was the main objective? Did the rain gods get happy? We also had three religion priests doing a non-stop 24-hour prayers to invoke rain gods while this plantation was going on. But did it rain? The story still continues. As part of Guinness guidelines, we had appointed three observers, three credible observers, Padmashri, 
Mrs. Krishnama Jagannathan, who later on won the alternate Nobel Prize. Vellore Srinivasan, who was later featured in Satyamev Jayate. And Padmashri, Dr. Padma Subramaniam, the Bharatnatyam dancer, who later was awarded Padma Bhushan. Dr. Padma Subramaniam suddenly took the public address system from my hand and said, I want to sing. She said, I want to sing a raga which is to invoke rain gods. Let me tell you, there was not a single cloud anywhere in sight. She said, I do not guarantee that it's going to bring rains. But in the past, whenever I had sung it, it had rained within 48 hours. With this, she sang in Tamil, Ippumalai Peyavenu, I now want rains. The 2,000 odd crowd standing there sang with her. Next 20 minutes, they sang and the day ended. Next morning, I woke up with a nightmare that all these saplings, 80,000 of these, have died. While we had made all arrangements for long-term watering by digging 64 large ponds there, we had completely missed out on that first watering. We could assemble around 400 self-help group women tried our level best and finished watering by the end of the day, covering only 40,000 saplings. The rest of the 40,000 saplings, there was no hope that these would survive. The next day, 6th of December, morning 5 a.m., I started getting calls. The villagers were calling to inform that the entire place is flooded. The district of Nagapatnam, the entire stretch, had 76 millimeter of rainfall on 6th of December. This not only saved the 40,000 saplings, it also saved a 1,000 crore worth of paddy crop, which was standing on 1 lakh hectare of land. Do you see any connection, any scientific uh, evidence? What about my physics background? What were the lessons learned? Faith can move mountains. I'm sure majority of you are not going to believe this. You have all been brought up with a rationalist bent of mind. And this is how education has to teach. And that's the right way of doing it. But here is an example where I was confronted with this and had to believe that, yes, faith can move mountains. Is world record a high enough target to set for yourself? You had seen us underperforming. We had one more hour of time left, but we had no saplings available with us. Two years later, Asian tsunami struck the coast of Bay of Bengal. In the entire country, Tamil Nadu was the worst affected. Nagapatnam was the worst of the worst affected districts. 6,000 lives were lost in Nagapatnam. This plantation which we did for invoking rain gods became a tsunami barrier. This was the only village which completely survived. The belt of cashewina trees, which were now two years old, 12 feet high, were able to bear the entire brunt of tsunami and save the village. And reporting like this, which you see in Indian Express, actually shelved a project which government was contemplating of building a concrete wall across the entire coast of Tamil Nadu. While we visited the village again after tsunami with some of my college alumni, they demanded that, can you come and plant trees on 
the remaining stretch of coast which is lying barren. We promised that we'll do our best. Somehow or the other, we'll come back and plant trees. Formed a tsunami rehabilitation trust by name Bit Tsunami with my college alumni association. And incidentally, the name was coined by one of our colleagues here, Vaidhi. With this, we went ahead, decided that yes, let's try and surpass our own plantation record. This time, we thought we'll do a better planning, a better performance. So, targeted one lakh, that let's plant one lakh trees now. Raised a nursery for one and a half lakh saplings on the ground. Three days before the attempt, we were told that can we increase the target because we were doing this for tsunami victims in memory of tsunami victims. Worldwide, there were a total of 1.74 lakh tsunami victims. So can we, instead of 1 lakh, can we target for 1.74 lakh? We said, let's go ahead and do it. The same team of 300 farm workers started the exercise. We had by that time moved another 50,000 saplings on the ground, so 2 lakh saplings were available. And in 16 hours, 1.74 was crossed. We again knew that we are going to run short of saplings. Moved whatever more we can frantically and finished the entire event once again with one hour to spare with 2 lakh 54,464 saplings planted by a team of 300 persons in the given time of 24 hours, even though we had one more hour left. This you can see is tripling the previous record. So over the two attempts, these farm workers, 300 of them, had actually surpassed the previous record by six times. What are the lessons learned? Records are meant to be broken. Ceilings are created only in our minds. There are no other ceilings. Thinking small is a crime. The citizens have such a strong power. Each of us have such a power that if we start utilizing even a small fraction of it, we can surpass any kind of records. So with these words, please, as students, the only message I'll have is go aim for the sky. Nothing short than that and enjoy the journey. Thank you.